Really, I think we came out really strong with Smash, with Smash Ultimate, right? You know, we had 100, 200 people Super vocals. Super strong. And now it's been kind of dwindling with summer coming. I, we anticipate like a summer bump, but I don't know if we'll ever hit that peak of like with the game being brand new and people just, you know, thinking that they could be the next big player and then getting a reality check. I want to see some other crazy side events. We'll talk about that after we get into this uh, this next match rolling through. I have a couple suggestions on different side events that we can do. You guys saw some of them at the Charity Invitational, but we'll talk about some of those ideas after we get through this match. Uh, oh, yeah. Pac-Man and Pokemon Trainer, another definitely top tier match. Actually, I can't say that anymore because uh, we saw T come through and roll through uh, Prime Saga and the uh, Mega Smash Monday where he literally broke e Sam's ankles on screen kind of a situation. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say it's like that that crazy of a matchup. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, uh, Pac-Man is so much better. And I remember back in the old days when he had a crappy grab, but now his grab is freaking insane. It's actually insane. It'll just keep going and going. And then when the grab is done, he gets no lag. Uh -huh. You know, hey, totally safe, totally good. And on the flip side of that, you got Pokemon Trainer that back in the day, this is way back even before Pac-Man, <laughs> back in the day, uh, for all back in the day, this character is super upgraded and super synced up. Um, definitely, not, maybe not the necessarily the top tier threat that the Pokemon Ooh. Masters are hoping. Oh, there's a good up there covering that juggle, and he's got Charizard back out on the field. Getting back to Squirrel for those little percents, but not not necessarily that top tier god that they were hoping for, and like all the Pokemon Masters are hoping for, but <laughs> definitely a high tier threat, in my opinion. You know, definitely in that top 15 range, maybe top 20 range for characters. Maybe even higher in that, you know. I think just like outside of like the character performance, the fact that you have three different characters that you're able to train, it's just like you're you're very malleable. And right. adaptability is such a huge deal in any type of fighting game. And like when you have options all over the place, I, I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, we got a good character here. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Because a lot of times, you know, as a player, you see there, there are two types of people that went, oh, you know, he had that, the, uh, the, the stun and tried to follow that up. But up smash was not quite long enough. Might have just taken the up air instead. Mm. But uh, you know, a lot of players they have they come into two categories in how they adapt. They have their micro adaptations where they try to adapt within the game, and then they have like the more macro adaptations like between matches. And some players are really good at the micro level. Some players are really good at the macro level. And Pokemon Trainer as a character is one of those things where you can almost make those macro level changes within the context of like the micro uh, adaptations. You know, like. A full character switch in the middle of a match if you're not feeling it with Squirtle or, or Ivysaur, you know, et cetera. Like, you know, maybe your Charizard's the hot hand that day. Maybe you're you're able to cool them off with Squirtle. Just kind of depends. We got an up throw and there's a kill and that was a really interesting analogy. I've yeah. never heard of that before. My, uh, micro and macro. Yeah. That's that's cool. I'm gonna keep that in my little uh, mental file. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, I, a lot of times when I coach people, sometimes I would just have to tell them like that, like as the play level gets higher, everybody gets so in tune with adapting and they start, you know, even players that get in that Yomi level, Yomi 1, oh, I know he's going to do this, Yomi level 2, I know that he knows I'm going to do this, so I'll do something else, etc. And they get so into that that sometimes actually sticking with the game plan in its entirety is the mix-up in itself. And Sometimes it's better to not change up your plans in the middle of a game and just throw what you know. Oh, there's a good up smash. Yeah, that there. bell putting the work in. Yeah, he, he missed that first one earlier, but he's able to convert that one right now. Mm. And, and, you know, Pac-Man has a lot of really good out-of-shield options. Like, that forward air is, is pretty decent. Uh, the Nair is probably his best one, but, like, it, he's just a crazy character. It's, seriously, Pac-Man is a threat, and uh, don't sleep on him for one second. And I, mean, I find it interesting that, you know, he's trying to go to the camping game, but he's not using trampoline in the ways that we've been kind of accustomed to where they you know they put it on the ground to to kind of cut off the stage so that they have to get into the air to get around it yeah i've, I've been seeing him do the trampoline or sorry the, the the hydrant for that right which is it's a big old freaking brick wall so i mean it is it is kind of serving the purpose that you mentioned but uh, the trampoline is a nice little thing it's also a really good way of getting out of like a dash attack and like end lag right you know uh it's, it's a nice little trap Ooh, ooh the, the oh they hit the hot, i think they got the hydrant too yeah you got the hydrant just kind of knocked him right out of it. Oh, double kill. But he had a close match, and you know, Pokemon Trainer able to steal that victory. Mm. You know, Pac-Man Pac is down a game, but not out. Yeah, I still think Pac-Man busted, but hey, you know, <laughs> that's just me. I'm telling you, it's the trampoline. They got to cut off the stage and go to the camping game, and the, the best way to do that is to steal the trampoline out and just make them run over it. Charge the fruit and just, you know, go to town. Yeah, Pac-Daddy might be going to uh, not 
Pac-Man. <laughs> I was going to say, you better fear the people that have their main in their name. But, I mean, I don't know. Pal Daddy? I don't know. Whatever, dude. You're playing Palutena now, and this it's, is what uh, it's going to be. It's actually Palu Papa, if I'm not Palu mistaken. Papa, my <laughs> man. <laughs> Let's go. All right, we got the center stage right now. Oh, okay, we got the uh, the explosive flame into the uh, auto reticle. That's one of those combos where it's like I know that it works, but I still feel like I got mega styled on, and I don't like it. <laughs> That's kind of the uh, the mo for Palutena, though. You feel like you get nair carried for days and days and days, and you know after the fourth nair hits, sometimes you have to ask yourself like, is this all right? Is this what the game has become? She's still nairing you in the windscreen, <laughs> as far as I see it. Oh, okay, okay. Good thing that he was able to recover lower there. Because that, that up smash lasts a pretty long time. Like, yeah. you think it's over. Exactly. And I'm, I'm wondering if, like, I, I don't know this for sure, because I, I know, like, when people are charging smash attacks, like, Ness, for example, you know, doing a get-up attack immediately is usually the counterplay. But I'm wondering on the tether if that actually would work or if there's a vulnerable moment when they snap to the ledge immediately after the tether. Immediately after? That is a good question. Yeah. I don't think there is. I I'm I think there's some vulnerability, just like, like right. just like that, like as soon as he went to it, he was good to go. Oh uh, my god, he was about to be a god under the stage. And <laughs> yeah. did it, it went the wrong way, and unfortunately, that's yeah. where he like you flew to sell it on City instead of uh, Lavender Town on accident. <laughs> Gotta <laughs> hate when that happens. <laughs> and you lose, uh, you know, you lose your 15 seconds after speed run. <laughs> oh god, valuable time. Uh, and you know, I'm starting to see these down airs are getting a little telegraphed here. Like I know it's a very good thing to do, but like a lot of the time, you can just recover high against Ivysaurs that are just like I'm gonna down air. It's like, come on, we all know what's gonna happen. It's actually the long con uh, setup play they're gonna. You, oh my god, <laughs> speaking of long con setup plays. <laughs> yeah, just ne never expect that play to come out, right? That I was pretty sure that was a dead squidle because yeah. Uh, yeah, way too light. He was like at a hundred. Yeah, you gotta be really careful when you're uh, picking out squidle. Yeah, but at some point, you know, uh, in terms of feeling out the game, sometimes it's better to let your opponent not, ch you know, let, uh, challenge your opponent going low so that they go high, especially with Ivysaur as a character that has line whip or up air or, you know, the plethora of moves that Ivysaur has to challenge True. directly in the air. So it's like that conditioning's like, ah, I only made you think I was stupid. Ha <laughs> 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 ha, I gotcha. Right. Uh -oh. The joke is, uh, you know, you just got to be stupid all the time. <laughs> yeah. I want to get good at being stupid. Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my secret, Captain. I'm always stupid. <laughs> hey, good old Lux. Okay, missing that forward smash. That was kind of unfortunate. You know, I, I will say, uh, like, uh, Dino is, he's he really is. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, macro, what was it? Macro adjustment? Yeah. That was uh, a macro adjustment. Yeah, the character switch, a macro adjustment uh, coming into game two. And Palutena just changed the world uh, right she, there. Yeah, she really did. It was with that Nair, too. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay, we're going into game three. And, you know, I, I'm, I don't know what to attribute to it, whether it's the game plan or... I'm a little bit more skeptical on Pac-Man than you are. I think just Palutena is flat out a better character, especially in this particular matchup with you know all of her tools that we were talking about. So I, I think that probably, probably played a huge role. Let's see if Dino is going to end up. So, oh, no, he's going right back to Pokemon Trainer. We're locked in. No, uh, no macro change is going to go into the micro game, right? And just uh, let's see what kind of what kind of adaptations he's able to make. Mm. As far as Pac-Man goes, I both hope and don't hope you find out the hard way. <laughs> All right, so we got, okay, just kind of starting off right in the middle here. And good patience, uh, you saw, you know, Pack daddy throw up that jab to try to zone out, and Dino just waited just a little bit, then picked the spot and picked up a forward air, and hasn't really looked back. Oh, there's a forward tilt to get out the zoning. And there's that jab again. Oh, no, he ran into it this time. Just surfed right into it. Okay. Yeah, I was, like, like, giving him all the compliments of being patient, and then he ran into it. No. And that's what you have to do with Squirtle. Squirtle's really good at whip punishing you. Like, he has that instant dash attack. He's got uh, the forward tilt. It can trip you. It's it's actually really good stuff. But uh, And the aerial mobility to yeah. aerial you instead of running into a jab. And that was just, like, the changing point of the match. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm salty. I just, okay, you got to do what you got to do. So it's a, it was like a bright light, you know. It looks just too tempting, and you just want to run into it, pretty much. <laughs> I'm still that's a, that's running play, into that's stuff. That's a play that I would make, so that's why I'm salty. I just kind of I'm living vicariously and seeing that mistake. It's like, oh yeah, that's a Lux classic right there. I see a jab wall come up. That looks like a great thing to run into. I <laughs> love running the jab walls. Let me tell you. All right now, oh, man, I'm telling you, these down airs are getting really telegraphed. They're gonna get caught. They are getting caught very regularly now. And even the Razor Leaf is just getting uh, hit out by the side special for Palutena. It's just, it's 
rough times overall. Dino just... Okay, yeah, okay. Some that, pressure, yeah, okay. shield poke. Thought we were going to see grab, but that works out too. Okay, let's see if the Squirtle changes. And I don't mean like changes into Ivysaur. I mean, like, are we going to adapt here or are we going to get jacked here? He's going in, he's putting in some damage and he hit him like a thousand times and Squirtle did 45 damage for it. Hey, I mean, he's a little baby Pokemon. Yeah, the, every time he Razor Leaf, he's getting killed for it. And then, ah, oh man, it leads right into the up air. Was that man about the down air? Probably. Oh my god, okay, okay. And little did he know that Palutena's up air will actually, especially if thrown out a thousand frames beforehand, <laughs> will beat the down air coming from Ivysaur. More often than not, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what tends to happen. Okay, let's run into it. Run to that jab. Okay, oh, he's mixing it up. Didn't do a jab that time. Thought he'd be the wiser. Yeah, using the platform play there. I like that. Okay, and the up B. Okay, we're switching over to the charge. Let's see if there's any flame breath. I haven't seen any of the flame breath. Yeah. Got a down smash to read that roll off the ledge. A good option and covering it in the forward tilt. Yeah. Coming in with some hot play. Let's see if he's able, you know, it's not too little too late. Nice. And he's spaced out the Oh my god, it's yeah. a genius option. Yeah. The long con is here. He, he did got it. hit by the jabs early to bait it out, and then he's like, let me uh, kill you for it with, uh, with a Charizard. <laughs> mm. ah, I only made you think I was dumb. Gotcha, right. buddy. Uh, are we going to switch from the Squirtle, though? Because I, I, I'm telling you right now, I really hope that he was uh, conditioning with that down there with the Ivysaur because he needs to start changing oh, it up. Oh, he's punishing Jab all day. It's like he heard me. Mm -hmm. It's all the, it's that Lux coaching from the commentator booth. Uh. He, probably, he probably heard you. <laughs> and right now, he's, he's putting on that low damage and, you know, probably another good 10 or 15. And then Ivysaur's going to come. Oh, he's going to Ivysaur now. And he gets a down air for it. Hey, that's, hey. That's a sneak attack. You start with Squirtle in the middle of the air, switch to Ivysaur, and then get the down air because before you are just getting up air for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shows what I know. That was actually pretty sweet. He's, oh. ma he's making a run at it. So now we have a set. And see if he can avoid it. Oh, my God. He gets another down air. <laughs> it's been working. Uh, you don't have to change nothing. Oh, okay. And that time he reflected it instead of explosive. Uh, oh no, the up air! That that felt inevitable. <laughs> it was like a, it looked like when he went for the nair there. It looked yeah. like he wanted an up air. Did yeah. you just say that he fan out him? Uh, the spoiler bar goes up. Dude, <laughs> I I you know I don't even pay attention to superhero movies. What? I don't. Oh, I just ruined the movie I, for I, you. I, My bad. Oh no, you didn't. Okay. I, I didn't even hear what he said. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I um, I mean. <laughs> 